Hello, and thank you for tuning into another episode of A Voice for All. I'm your host, Jamila Gamble, and I'm so excited that you're about to watch this show because it needs to be said. And at any point, you like to tweet, join the Jam Fam, um, email me. All the information is below. I love to hear from you guys. I love your feedback. I love your show suggestions, and I read every single one of your messages. So thank you for doing that. Um, as you know, in our school board, we have teachers and we have teaching assistants. We have people who support our children or our students who have special needs. And I think a lot of people misinterpret what teaching assistants do within the school board. So we have Karen who is going to tell us. We are going to talk it out because it is about time people fully understand what we as teaching assistants do in the school board. So thank you for being on A Voice for thank All. Thank you for having me. Now let's get to it. Let's, let's roll up our sleeves. What do TAs do within the school board? Well, we do it all. Yes, in we summary. All. <laughs> uh, most of the time, well, for myself, when I worked in the schools, uh, I would have my student, we'd have itinerants coming in, mm -hmm. we'd have psychologists coming in, we'd have all kinds of people coming in to see, you know, your student. They'd sit with your student for a couple of minutes. They'd give you the instructions, if that, if, if, that, that. if they'd show, mm -hmm. um, and you'd be on your own. Ta-da. Um, I worked with a student that uh, came first day of school, didn't know anything about him, and I had nobody to guide me. And I had to make it up as I went along. Mm -hmm. It took two weeks for somebody to come in to wow. tell me and to show me their profile. Wow. So here we are, we're talking about TAs, but really we are now called Education Resource Facilitators. Yes, that's the name of our union. Mm -hmm. Uh, we did a name change quite some years ago that uh, the board hasn't recognized, but uh, the union has decided to go on with the name, and that's right. the name of the union we go by as ERFP. Um, and yeah, so in the board, we're still known as teaching assistants, right. which you know we're hoping that one day they'll recognize us as ERFP, okay. um, to keep it short, um, so that we can go forward. So with teaching assistants, people see, think that, oh, you're a teaching assistant, you you help in the classroom. You help organize the teacher's lessons plans. Like, but that's that's far from the truth of what we do. No, you shouldn't be doing any lesson plans for yes. the teacher. Yes. However, uh, you know, with special needs kids, a lot of the times you do the planning for your special needs yes. kids because there isn't enough time in the day for a teacher to do it mm -hmm. to specialize for one kid. So you kind of run and go with the flow. So let's talk about the many hats that we wear. So some that I could think of: um, OT, occupational therapist; PT, physiotherapist. SLP, speech language um, therapist, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, what else did we do? Uh, daily living, um, anti-bullying, communications. Like the, the list, list goes on. The list and on. goes on and on. It, you do not understand how much a teaching assistant does within the classroom. There are so many hats, there is so much that's expected of us. And are we complaining? No. We absolutely love what we, we do. We love our kids and we, we do love. what you gotta do. We're so invested. So within the school, what else would you see a teaching assistant do? We do a lot of other things. You know, we uh, try to attend staff meetings. We go to meetings in the school. We do mm -hmm. workshops to educate ourselves. Right. Um, and staying current mm -hmm. uh, with what's out there, different technology. Um, we're helping out in the classroom with the other students that need help that absolutely. aren't identified. Oh, and yes. That happens a lot. Those are our favorite oh, ones. Oh, yes. Those are the ones that take up more time than <laughs> our than actual students. students. So in, in total, there's days that we could be watching four children. And four children with such high mm. needs could amount to 30 kids yep. in a class. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think what we're trying to do within this interview is really educate the community um, on what we do and, and to add some more value mm -hmm. to our roles. Yeah. And, you know, we do a lot in our day, and I don't think people recognize how much we're stretched, yes. how many students are brought to us, mm -hmm. how many extras we have to continue doing, and how much we have to do on our own time, because there isn't planning time for us to do all these things in the day. What is planning time? Planning time? What, do, do, we, do we get that? <laughs> planning, what is planning, planning time? Planning time is something that uh, <laughs> teachers have yes. um, to plan for their classes, but a lot of the times uh, teaching assistants don't have that time. I had to do a lot of, you know, activities for my students at home. Oh, yes. Out of my own pocket because I didn't even have a budget. Right. Because there wasn't any money. So let's talk about this now. Uh, teachers have obviously their duties. They have their union. They have their responsibilities. Uh, ERFP, we have our thing. Let's talk about the summertime because, again, people think that us teaching assistants get paid. 
Nope. In the summer? Nothing. Two months off. Ooh. Two do months. we do we get paid in the summer? Nothing. Nothing. The best we can do is apply for unemployment and then you sit and wait. Yes. And you have to continue looking for work. Yes. Which, you know, we were out there looking at the job postings, looking at what's out there. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a diploma as a teaching assistant, you're pretty much, you know, don't want to say limited. the word limited yeah. to what you can actually do during the summer. Mm -hmm. And stay within, you know, your rate of pay. Absolutely. And and then we have to Which wait Which is a challenge. The, right. And then when we come back to September and it's, you know, we're getting right back into the thick of things. But also with teaching assistants, I think people question what our background is, which is diverse, no? Mm -hmm. So there's some child there's, and youth workers. There's child and youth workers. There's uh, uh, designated early childhood educators. Yes. Which is new to our board. Let's within actually the past, focus on that They're for new a to our board. Mm -hmm. within the, uh, this is the fifth year of in implementation right. to Peel. Um, and I was just at a big hire on this morning, so we got another good chunk of hire awesome. ons this morning. Um, they were a focus in our kindergarten classrooms, and they uh, work alongside the classroom teacher planning for kindergarten students, and they focus just on kindergarten students. Okay, That's so there's the, the DECE, and then there's the teaching assistant. assistant. Same umbrella. Yes. Same very union. different. Very different, different jobs. Yes, same union, same contract but two different positions. Okay, so let's talk about now if the school board, you know, maybe someone's tuning in and they want to apply to the school board, typically what kind of qualifications would a ERF have to have? Well, to be a, as a special needs, you would have to either have, you know, your educational assistance uh, program, mm -hmm. um, you could have your diploma in psychology, a child and youth worker, any of those type of um, education background or a degree, disability yep, studies, services service worker, worker behavioral studies, right. um, any type of those type of uh, programs right. from college or university. So would essentially our staff are well educated. educated. Oh yes, and yeah. we have to stay current. Yes. The uh, DECEs, they have to continue up with their license every year. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah, they have to pay the fee and they have to stay registered with the, um, the College of ECEs to continue on into uh, the next year of their school year. Very interesting. I never knew what exactly they had to do. It's to, similar to the to teachers where they have to continue on with their license um, to, uh, for their designation. Okay, so since the DECE works so closely with the teacher, that's not to say that TAs do not do the same, no? Right. We, we work very closely we with do. the teachers as well. We do. Whereas a TA will probably work with a couple of students, uh, DECE will work with the whole class. Right. And work alongside with the planning and the implementation. But still the collaboration between TA and teachers, yes. it's not that we're separated. We still, we're communicating, because we're right. here, we're all here for the well-being of the right. student, mm -hmm. but the TA is more hand-in-hand. -hand That's correct. With the student. student. So Doing what, more personal care. Uh, right. So what other misconceptions do you think the general public has when it comes to teaching assistants? I think a lot of people think that we sit there and we do photocopying that we run around putting up bulletin boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the past, I've had that uh, misconception from staff as well. Oh, okay. So it's a lot of educating. It's a lot of starting from scratch mm -hmm. and getting to where you need to be. And I would think as TAs, we've come a long way. We have. We have quite a bit over the past few years. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's the future now for TAs? Being recognized as an ERF for, for our board. Right. Uh, and moving forward from the misconceptions being recognized that we do work hard, we do all, you know, the same type of jobs for our students. Being celebrated. Right. You know, there's Teacher's Day, but right. really within Teacher's Day, it's, it's, it's really for teachers. That's right. There's not, you know, designated Early Childhood Educator Day. Nope, they group us Teaching all together. Day. Yeah. They group us all together. Our job is very hands-on. Very. Very hands-on mm -hmm. in all different ways, doing therapies with the kids, physical therapy, um, toileting, lifting out of wheelchairs. Our job is a lot. Our backs. <laughs> our, we were talking earlier about our backs. The our first backs. to go. Yeah, it's the first, first to go. go. And, you know, as, as we're educating the general public on what, you know, TAs do, I think the other group of people who need to recognize what we do is the parents. There are some parents who celebrate us, who are grateful for what teaching mm -hmm. assistants do. Um, and then there's some other parents who are they're not really aware of what we do. So I encourage you parents who, you know, if you do have a child who has special needs, really form a meaningful connection with that teaching assistant because truthfully, that is your connection to the school board. That is someone who is with your child day in, day out. Essentially, whether it's a male TA or, or a female TA, we are almost like mom and dad. Mm -hmm. 
you know. So it's really, really important to establish a strong communication to, to be friendly with one another because we are the voice, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, what any last second things you like to add about parents? I've had some really amazing parents in the past, very supportive, very kind, that mm -hmm. actually recognized that Good. we do went above and beyond. And I'm thankful for them. Mm -hmm. um, still keep in touch. And um, I just want to thank, to thank everybody that, um, that it's shaped you. That shaped not only myself, but everybody in the field. Right. Because it's those special moments and those positive mm -hmm. outcomes that bring you to your next job, to your next school, to your next student. Perfectly said. Karen has educated us so much about what the role is of a teaching assistant. And if you are in the field and you are interested, all the information is at the bottom of the screen. We will show it afterwards um, for anyone who wants to apply to be in the school board. We're always looking for new staff and new people to collaborate with. It's been another awesome episode of A Voice for All. I will see you guys after the break. Don't forget to join the Jam Fam, facebook.com forward slash Miss Jam Gamble, and you can email me at missjams.pcss at gmail.com. And remember, Peel, please make sure your businesses are accessible. And for more information on the ERFs of Peel, visit their website at www.erfp.ca. So this didn't work. Welcome back to A Voice For All. I'm so excited because I have a swirly chair. Love it. Okay. On this segment, I am so super excited because I have two studs on my show. Two. One, two. Ha. Welcome to A Voice For All, Brett and Zach from Voices For Ability. And what is so amazing about Voices For Ability, it is the only, listen to me, the only show for people with disabilities by people for disability, with disabilities, right? 400%. Or about well, by people with disabilities. Yeah, I, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing that you guys are doing this. So welcome to A Voice for All. We have no stage because we're all about accessibility here. And this is awesome. This is awesome. So thank you guys for being on the show. I hope you guys are excited as I am to tell me about what you guys are doing for Voices for Ability. You guys can rock, paper, scissors first. Who's going to tell me what's been going down? <laughs> so... Uh, oh, he's taking the lead. Yeah, so Voices for Ability uh, was... Uh, developed, uh, the concept was developed before November of last year. Okay. Um, we, we launched in February of this year, um, and we've been uh, on the ground running, pardon the pun. Literally. Yeah. And yeah. you guys are under the scope of Connect for Life. Connect for Life. Who were actual past guests on A Voice for All, so it's great to have you guys on now. Well, uh, Connect for Life, uh, personally approached me uh, to uh, be their uh, first on-air personality awesome. uh, for Voices for Ability, and mm -hmm. uh, I've loved every second of it so far. All right. Yeah. Zach, what's your role with Voices for Ability? Uh, so I do a bunch of things with Voices for Ability. Mm -hmm. Right now I've recently taken up the role of uh, station manager, um, but you know I, I help out any way I can. I'm uh, a radio broadcasting student out of Humber College right now. Um, so started uh, with Voices for Ability for my internship. Mm -hmm. Just thought it was a great opportunity that I, you know, I was getting that nobody else was getting at my, uh, in my program. And uh, so you know, I do anything I can: content creation, editing, uh, and and strategic planning. And personality-wise, you two both seem like the <laughs> ideal people that we need on radio stations. 
I think uh, that uh, if Zach and I were to actually get our own show together. It'd be dangerous. It, it might be dangerous, but I think it would be uh, something that uh, everybody would listen to. Yeah, I think the number one thing uh, at this point is as much as, you know, Voices for Ability, our goal is to have, you know, a great resource for people with mm -hmm. disabilities. But I also, um, you know, it's on my personal agenda for the station, if you will. I want it to be a very entertaining mm -hmm. um, because I think that's extremely important. And, uh, you know, I want anybody, disabled or not, to be able to listen to it and have a great time. Exactly. And I think the one key thing that we did not mention is that this radio station is 24-7. Yes, 24-7, uh, running all the time. Uh, you know, it, 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 it does make it difficult coming from, you know, a, a, a from the ground up operation mm -hmm. um, to, to fill that time. Um, but that, that's our goal. We want it to be just as if you would listen to any other radio station on the FM dial. Uh, that's the kind of quality and, and, uh, and content that we want to get out there. Now, when I first met Brad, you said you always dreamed of being in media. And very rarely do you even see people who have a physical disability, whether it's visibly seen on TV, let alone on a radio station and right. now you're kind of like living up to your dream. Well I was first uh, subjected to somebody with a disability uh, being on television back when I was about five or six when mm -hmm. I wa saw uh, David Onley uh, on City TV. Right, you were telling me that's one of your idols. Um, and uh, he was somebody that I, act I looked up to um, because he had a disability and he was doing something that I really wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And basically, the radio station, it's not to say that, you know, able-bodied people can listen. Like, the content is for... No, that, that's 100% that's uh, our goal. We want it to be listenable by, by all. anybody and everybody and be entertaining and be a great information resource mm -hmm. for anybody, mm -hmm. uh, disabled or not. I think where it focuses on people with disabilities is the empowerment piece, right? That people who have a disability feel, wow, look at you two guys. You know, people might question, how can I contribute to society? How can I do things? And you guys are doing this. You know, you are a testament to people out there who are watching, going, I could aspire to be in media. I could work on radio. I could be, a, you know, an amazing journalist or interviewer. Like, you guys are living the dream, literally. And I think it's important to realize that the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only person that's holding yourself back is you yourself. So uh, there's a... Uh, if you're given an opportunity, just take the bull you by the horns. It. So speaking of opportunity, how did you get reeled in to Voices for Ability? Um, so like I said before, uh, I am in radio broadcasting at Humber College. Uh, just finished my first year, going into my second year uh, next week, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I'm looking for, I was looking for internships uh, near the end of the year, just getting experience. Um, so Connect for Life and Voices for Ability founder, uh, Melanie Tadio sent out emails to all the, uh, the college programs, internet, or it's not internet, radio programs, uh, all the college ones, and my program co coordinator, Sheila Walsh, uh, got the email uh, and she forwarded it my way, just saying, hey, listen, this awesome. is probably something that you need to look into. Mm -hmm. um, and I did. I, I, I saw that, and as I said before, that was an opportunity that I knew that I had to take and I could take that nobody else in my program was able to. Absolutely. Um, and you know, looking at things now, um, you know, I'm, like I said, doing editing, I am doing promotions, I am, you know, doing on-air stuff, mm -hmm. strategic planning, I'm learning so much and getting so much experience, right. um, where otherwise, if I think of I was, you know, interning at a big name station, I might just be handing out flyers. True. And like I said, you're both being an inspiration, right? Truthfully, you guys are being an inspiration. I want to Talk about the content. What type of topics can people expect to hear on Voices for Ability? Um, so a big thing um, that I think is really interesting, and you say the word inspiration, uh, and I just want to touch on that <laughs> just for a second, is just that I think a big goal is that we want to be inspiring without having to label it, the content as inspiring. Mm. We want to be able to do what we're doing and people to be inspired mm -hmm. by what we're doing, mm -hmm. not because we're labeling it as inspiring content. Right. Um, so right now the station is mainly comprised of music and uh, different interview content. We have interviewed David Onnelly, we've interviewed different service providers, uh, uh, you know, disabled uh, 
holiday cruises, things like that. Um, just getting information out there at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, but as things grow, um, we are working on everything from, you know, disabled restaurant reviews um, to even having our very own uh, sex talk. Why? I love that. I really, <laughs> that one, not, the reason why it stood out to me is because, again, there is this misconception that the people with disabilities get it on. Yes, they do. Why not talk about it? I ah, mean, uh, it. Our, uh, one of our team members, uh, Tim Rose, he started his own uh, foundation, not foundation, uh, organization called the Rose Center for uh, Sex and Disability. And I knew him from uh, previous interactions and such. So when I came on the station, I just knew that we needed guess. to get him involved. And so I came on just trying to get him as a guest. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to just, you know, mm -hmm. see if he wanted to do an interview or something. So I met up with him, tried to sell him the idea of the station just to come on for an interview. And he was 100% sold. So now he's on board with the station and is a Beautiful. member of Voices for Ability. So we're, uh, we're working on a weekly show right now. Uh, talking about everything because that's just something that's not talked about. Yep, you're right. Um, awesome. it, it's, it's not a resource that's out there and it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So Brett, as one of the people who do the interviews for Voices for Ability, who are some guests you love to see come on the show? Well, our fir the first two guests we had uh, was Carl Ludwig, and yes, uh, Carl. Uh, who's a uh, Paralympic athlete from the Peel region. Mm -hmm. And we had Justin Hines. Oh, I love Justin Hines. Love him. I cried <laughs> when I saw him perform once. And really, before I actually knew ju who Justin Hines wa mm -hmm. was, I heard one of his songs through a Walmart commercial. And oh. I, and actually, f I fell in love with his songs through Walmart, which mm -hmm. is kind of... Creepy. Creepy. But uh, <laughs> absolutely, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, That's two great people to yeah. be having on the show. Mm -hmm. And again, two other inspirational people Topic-wise, yeah. what they're doing for the community. Um, when I first met Melanie, who was actually on um, in season two for Connect for Life, I was blown away by everything that she is doing for the Peel region. And this initiative, this was the one that really stood out to me because it is the only radio station, the only one that is making such a big mark um, on our community. So I really have to applaud Connect for Life and Voices for Ability because they are breaking down barriers, they are educating, they're inspiring without, you know, saying the word inspiration, but they are doing it. Um, and those two groups, Connect for Life and Voices for Ability, they run off of donations, they run off of funding. So if you are looking for a challenge to do, I challenge you to support organizations like that. I challenge you to find out what are they are doing, you know, find out how maybe you could be a guest maybe spread the word to a relative, a friend, get the message out there because it needs to be done. Um, we are so grateful for Connect for Life and Voices for Ability and the bridge and the connections that they're making and I, I'm, I'm really proud of them. So again, if you would love to get more information, all their information's at the bottom of the screen. You could also join me on the Jam Fan page. I'll be posting a link um, to Voices for Ability. Again, like I said, connect with them, listen to their content, donate, fundraise, volunteer. They need guests like you. So this has been another awesome episode of Voice for All. Thank you so much, Brett and Zach, my two studs. And I will catch you guys next week. Don't forget to join the Jam Fam on Facebook.com forward slash Ms. Jam Gamble. And don't forget, Peel, to please make sure your businesses are accessible. And if you like to contact Voices for Ability, you can visit their website at Voices4Ability.com.